Good job. I want to talk this morning about the spiritual attack. Um, did you know that the problems that maybe you've gone through, the difficulties, do you know that the hardships, the health scare, the different things that have come your way, did you know that the root of it could be in a spiritual attack on your life? What do you mean by that? Did you know that after something God does in your life or after you step forth in obedience, as our brother Carlos was saying, did you know that that's when the enemy tries to stop you where you're at? I was reading a scripture in Acts chapter 16. Here, here's the context to this. Paul accepted the Macedonian call. He said yes to the Lord. He kind of didn't know which route to go, and, but he concluded, it said in verses prior to these verses, up here on the screen, up here on the screen, yeah, there we go. He concluded that it was God's will to go to the region of Macedonia. Philippians was a, a big city in that area, kind of a commerce city. And here's what was going on, that Paul said yes to the Lord, concluding that it was the will of God that he should go there. But what happened was, is that as soon as he went there, there arose a problem. When you decide to say yes to God, many times that's when the enemy is going to attack you all the more. Let me read the verses. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept it up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the Spirit left her. I want to kind of... Let's not have talking during the message, please. But may I say that a lot of times the things that come against us. Just give me about five minutes and I'll be through, but a lot of times the things that come against us, it's hard for us to understand where they come from. Here Paul said yes to the Lord, and there's a few things that kind of stick out to me, but let me just kind of get to it. What does the spiritual attack look like for you in your life? First of all, it says, once, when we are going to the place of prayer, when you decide to say yes to the Lord, many times that's when you're going to find yourself attacked. It says here that once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl. When you decide to say yes to the Lord, I remember when I was first introduced to the Lord that I was out on a Saturday night, and I don't want to give my story, but I remember waking up on Interstate 80. We were out all night, and I think I woke up on the side of the, the road there, and, and our car, the doors open. But the first thing that came out of my mouth was, to, to the person that was with me, I think I was 17 at the time, I said, let's go to Washington to become Christians. Now, I knew that the place in Washington was a drug rehab, and I desperately needed one. We were out all night, and we were strung out. I, lucky I didn't get run over there, and truck semis passing us. We ended up hitchhiking out to there. The car wasn't working. But after we got out there, I think I got thrown in jail for a day or two. Maybe I did something else wrong. We didn't make it there. 
Then the next day we made it there, and that was the foundation for everything. But here's my point. When I made a decision that I needed to get help, that's when the enemy was trying to distract me. When I made a decision that I needed to follow God, here's what I want to say. When you make a decision that you are going to try to live right, when you make a decision that you're going to try to start the day out in prayer, when you make a decision that you're going to try to find the right friends, when you make a decision that you're going to try to do right, that you're going to cut some things out that are hurting your life, that's when the enemy, many times that's when you're going to be met by other things. Here's what I want to say to you. Maybe the trouble in your life is a spiritual thing, a spiritual attack. Now listen, there's two spirits at work in your life. There's the Holy Spirit and there's the Antichrist spirit. There's no in-between. I'm sorry. You're made up of spirit. I know you have body, mind, and soul, but your spirit is the thing that lives on. It's the everlasting. It's the most important thing that you got going for you. Let me just say this. Get your spirit right. Many other things begin to fall in place. You see, because it's a spiritual matter. But let's go. We are going to the place of prayer. We were met by a slave girl. Many times you're met by things. It's a phone call. It's a relative saying something to you. It's a health problem. You're met by something when you begin to move towards God, who had a spirit by which he was predicted the future. It was a different spirit that was at work in Paul. There is another force that's working against you. There's another force that maybe you can't see. John David, hold up that phone for a moment. Uh, uh, hold it up, just hold it up. There, there's our phone. Can you see the things that uh, when you make a phone call, you can't see the bytes and all the different things, can you? The internet uh, going through the air, you can't see all that. Well, you would be surprised that the spiritual battle that's going all around you if your eyes were open for a moment. Just like you can't see the different things, the waves, the, the electronic waves around you, you can't see this spiritual battle that's trying to ruin your life, that's trying to take over your family. But here we go. They had a spirit by which she predicted the future, earned a great deal of money. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us. Did you know that the enemy is not going to give up so easy and let you go? As a matter of fact, that the enemy is trying to follow you and to ruin your day. The enemy is trying to follow you and to harass you and to disrupt dis, uh, your family and, and, and your job and your life. As a matter of fact, that's the attack of the enemy. You see, the whole thing here was a spiritual matter. The whole thing that Paul was dealing with was a spiritual matter. Now, let me just say, prior to this, Paul made a decision to follow God. When you make a decision, and I gave you an a, 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 a illustration from a long time ago. That's maybe weak, but it's an illustration. When I stepped out, what about you in your life? When you decide that you're going to quit stealing, when you decide that you're going to start telling the truth, when you decide that you're going to follow God or you're going to try to be your best, did you know that that's when the enemy comes after you the most? Listen, here we, here we go. Uh, th this girl followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting. You know, a lot of times the noise in our life is nothing more than the enemy shouting at you and trying to hurt you. Now, you say, Pastor, why are you bringing this up? Sometimes if you have an understanding of where the problem comes, is coming from, it helps you to be able to deal with it a little better. Sometimes if you have an understanding of what's going on around you, it's easier for you to be able to make it to the place where you need to be. Now, the shouting, the noise, all the different things uh, in your life, many times there's things that uh, disrupt us that we wonder where they're coming from. Rich, why don't you go help also? They might need your help. Let me know if you need me to. 
This girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. You know, a lot of times we wonder why things don't go away. It was kept up for many days. And, you know, sometimes we're dealing with things that we wish we didn't have to keep dealing with. Maybe it's an addiction. Things that are kept up. And we don't like the things many times we're dealing with. I'm trying to give an understanding of all those different things that we deal with on a regular basis. Here, it says that she kept this up for many days. Here's what I like. Finally, Paul became so troubled. And I guess, here's where we'll transition. I'm already uh, uh, lost our time, but, but I enjoyed the time of prayer. That's good for us. But listen, finally, Paul became so troubled. So let me leave you with these last few quick points. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the Spirit, here's what I want to say. You and I cannot learn to live with the attacks on our life. We got to somehow do something about them. There's the attack on our life. Paul became so troubled. Are you troubled by the harassment of the enemy against your family? Are you troubled by what the enemy is doing to your kids? Are you troubled by the attack of the enemy on our nation, on our world, on young kids that are being destroyed? Are you troubled by what's going on around you? You see, after the following, the shouting, after being harassed, did you know the worst problem is so, some of us uh, have been harassed for so long, we're getting used to it. We're getting used to the enemy taking control. That will be the worst mistake for us because then it's hard to get help. It's hard to move forward. Paul became so troubled that he turned around. Here's, what, here's my, my point, and I know I'm not doing justice. I kind of scrapped my notes a little bit because uh, we went a different... But let me leave you with something. And this, you could, you, this could help you this week. Don't allow all the different things that are coming against you to stick. As a matter of fact, when they come against you, say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you and I command you to get under my feet. In the name of Jesus, I do not surrender my wife or my husband to you. In the name of Jesus, I do not give you my kids. My kids are bought and paid for by Jesus. As a matter of fact, I do not surrender nothing to you, Satan. God is going to help you through. Now, that's what Paul did here. Paul turned around. And I don't know what turning around looks like for you, but you got to turn around. What do you mean? You got to pivot somewhere. You got to get tired of all the things that are harassing you, and you got to make a decision that you're going to do something about it. Listen, I woke up on the side of that road, and I knew that if I would have continued on, Four or five of my friends since then were killed or in life in prison. And uh, I really ran around with a good crew. But what I'm getting at, uh, that, 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 that if I wouldn't have turned around, I possibly or probably would have been in the same uh, predicament. Here's what I want to say. Turn around this week. You know what you need to do to draw closer to God. Don't stay and uh, allow the enemy to harass you. As a matter of fact, do like Paul did in this uh, spiritual attack. She kept it up. The enemy is going to keep doing it until you push back. The enemy is going to keep harassing your husband, your, your wife, your, your children until you push back. Now, how are you going to push back? Get in their face and start yelling at them? I didn't say that. Here's what you could do. You could pray. You can, you can intercede. You can plead the blood of Jesus. You see, we do not fight in flesh and blood. It's a spiritual battle. Here's what I want to say. The, na the problem our nation is faced with today is a spiritual battle. If you think it's going to be run, won with money, you got another thing coming. <clears throat> if you think that uh, 
we're going to change direction through some other invention. No, I'm, I'm struggling. Give me that water. We're really getting, we're really having a great one here, aren't we? I'm sorry. I got to end this. Here we go. Paul became so troubled that he turned around. All I'm saying is let's turn around. I don't know. You know what turning around was? When we all got up here and prayed. That was turning around. You did. You turned around. That's turning around. So do something like that throughout the week. Turn on the music in your car and say, no, when I go to work, my boss is going to love me. I, I bind everything that the boss is trying to do to me. Here we go. And said to the spirit. I guess that's the key. Don't say to the person, say to the spirit. It was coming out of the girl, but many times we attack the wrong thing. You got to attack the, the root of the problem. You got to, is everything all right? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out. So, here we go. Let's, let's hit the right thing. And, you know, we could do it this way. We could, we could say it, and we could attack our husband, our wife. You know what? You know where the confusion is really coming from? The enemy trying to bring you down. And, you know, the enemy uses a lot of different things. Remember? I'll end with this. Remember Peter? Peter went and tried to protect Jesus. And Jesus, you know what he said? He says, Satan, get behind me. And he talked to Peter. Now, don't do that to your husband, please. Sue tried to do it to me, and I said, no, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> did you try to do that to me, Sue? Uh, what I'm saying is, Jesus understood where the real problem is. Listen, God has an open door for you. He does. God has a great future for you. And the enemy is trying to stop it. The enemy is trying to stop you in your tracks right now. Because you, 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 you've crossed a hurdle. If you're trying to beat addiction, let me tell you something. The enemy is going to come after you like you've never, nobody's business. Why? Because everyone around, if you get free, you're going to be a powerhouse. If you somehow start to follow Jesus, you're going to rock your world. And here's what I want to say. The enemy's not going to want to let you go. There's too much at stake. So here's what we're going to do this week. When you think, when things are coming against you, you know, we're going to stand on the blood of Jesus. We're going to plead the blood of Jesus. We're going to rebuke those things that are trying to ruin our life. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to find victory. We're going to find breakthrough. We're going to find that God is, does something in the spiritual realm. So you're going to have a great week. You're going to have a good... I hope you got something out of it. It was a little twisted, you know, and I'm sorry. We... we we did work hard this week. We worked 14 hours every day and, uh, and different things. And it's going to be, but listen, but God had a word for you. And this is, out of the, this is a New Testament word out of the book of Acts that Paul found deliverance.